it's it's really pretty scary. You know, if it looks like a duck and it acts like a duck and it sounds like a duck, it's probably not a chicken. And uh, that's that's what's scaring me about the activity in the stock market right now. Some analysts disagree, but Paul Jones and Peter Burish are among those who think there's a crash coming and a big one. What's going on, everybody? Michael Silva here. You just watched a clip of Peter Borish in 1987 documentary called Trader. He traded alongside Paul Tudor Jones. They worked together and they predicted the 1987 stock market collapse. What I found so important about that collapse was they were predicting it off into the future. So they were way prepared before it happened. Their predictions were about the end of March in 1988. That trade alone brought in the firm $100 million. Dang. Holy dangs. All right, today we're going to be discussing the S&P 500 on the daily time frame and the 30-minute time frame. Right now we're looking at the daily. If you watched yesterday's video, I discussed the gap down and all this big momentum to the downside. And really what we were saying, and we'll get more into it on the 30-minute time frame, but as you can see, this bulls camp, there was a lot of like confusion within this area so when the bears came back in here we didn't just say hey it's going to just continue to fall like a rock we didn't say that no we said that it's going to hold around 3,000 because it closed right at that level and it has a lot of support through this region if you look back in the chart over here and what took place today was very interesting but kind of predictable we were talking about how sometimes when rubber bands get stretched out they have to sling back and that's what we saw we saw it come this huge just bullet shot red day right and then it gapped up pretty significantly to 3071 push itself a little bit higher and then started going just falling throughout pretty much the rest of the day some up and down movement retested the three thousand dollar range but it's not ready to break through that range that's normal in these type of environments that's you know it's what we talk about it's it's consolidating is what it's doing it's it's finding an area of where it wants to go this is nothing too crazy especially going into a friday when we have options contracts expiring people don't know what they want to do as far as um leaving money on the table or taking it off going into the weekend so yeah we saw this bear pull and now we're seeing it consolidate it's gonna it's gonna be some sort of a bear flag um taking place right now if it keeps trading within that range which we'll talk about that range in the 30 minute time frame but um that's normal that it, it's it's normal so we had a little bit of a little bit of an up day i guess you know just a little bit nothing nothing too crazy but it's a very still somewhat you know bearish kind of looking candle i mean it gapped up which was bullish but then pushed itself down and then worked itself up and really in the last 30 minutes which once again we'll go into it pushed itself back up it formed somewhat of a hammer candle so keep that in mind it's a reversal candle especially in this context as drawback and it ha created a hammer candle at the three thousand dollar range and the 200 period moving average so really what we're going to have to look for is the areas of support or sorry the areas of resistance in the 30 minute time frame to see if we can get another more momentum to the upside now keep in mind the overhead resistance here is going to be the top of this um bull camp Okay. Well, it's not really a bull camp anymore, right? We'll just we'll leave it up there and we'll just work about it. You know, we'll talk about it in another video when I, I remove it. But the resistance is going to be at 3130. That's basically where this gap down from and then push itself up. And then you could see it acted as resistance here. So that's going to be the area of resistance. And then the next really prominent area is going to be where the window kind of has to close, which is 3164 up to 3180 so it's about a 20 point range we'll just draw it in right there but that's going to be some big overhead resistance that the price would have to get up now windows are typically filled so i don't see why we wouldn't see some sort of bounce up especially off of after an aggressive move but um you know this is how bear market rallies you know sometimes play out now this was a huge rally but you what but what i mean by that is it the volatility itself increases significantly so that's what we're really seeing let's go ahead and hop into the 30 minute time frame and uh close this thing up here all right so we're here at the 30 minute time frame check this out so pretend uh, a bouncy ball okay the bouncy ball is right here and the bouncy ball gets thrown down woo, and then it bounces from here and then bounces up Whee! right that's what bouncy balls do and it comes back down and then bounces up and then landed right here Okay, what do you think that is a bullish thing or bearish thing? Well, from my perspective, 
you one push the ball off okay so when the ball falls down this big gap down that's bearish right it moves down but then the bounce resulted in somewhat of a high you know at this point let's tr let's actually let's just try it out all the way map it out the high was 30 30 88 so that acted as resistance and then when it bounced again this last 30 minutes it came up and then acted as resistance right there so what we're doing and what we're seeing is i'm going to remove the bouncy ball lines what we're seeing is we're seeing lower highs take place and so right here was a high right here was a high and now right here was a high so really what that is saying is the bears are making traction to the support we're pushing forward downwards direction to the support which the support really is that three thousand dollar call it range so right here i'll just three thousand dollars i'll make it green so now we have these areas of resistance that are being placed in by the highs of those bounces. So what do we have to see forward? Well, first I wanna just point out how these levels of resistance played out in the past. So notice here, if I scroll back, check this out. The high of right here, um, 3087, as you can see back here, it acted as a support. So it came all the way down, bounced from that level. Okay, so when it was support over here, and it didn't hit it exactly, but that's okay, it then, came down over in this range okay broke through and then acted as resistance came down and then it came back and acted as resistance again so this 3088 3100 level it's a range right those are big areas of resistance and then the next level of resistance this is resistance because it didn't close above it on the last 30 minutes but if i scroll back in the history of the chart you can also see how it interacted within this uh time frame of the chart it acted as resistance then acted as support right here resistance then support then broke through back tested it then it kept on getting rejected, rejected, then it kind of went sideways, and then boom, from that point, it moved itself up. So both very prominent areas. This uh, It says 3048, let's call it 3050 for rounding purposes. So that's 3050. This will be, let's just call it 3095, because it's between you know 3100 and 3090 or 30 whatever so that'll be 3095 is going to be the first level of resistance we have 3050 which is going to be the next level of resistance and then the main area of support that we need to keep an eye on is going to be this three thousand dollar range now the upper part of this portion the very highest level which you know may come into play will be that 31 let's call it 3130 um i mean you never know it, it might interact within this time period or in the next on monday's opening but it's it's a big price move to move within a single day very possible we've seen that type of action but it's not really on my radar at this particular point in time maybe maybe tuesday it might be but we'll see but so basically what we got going on here is we got going into monday we have two really prominent areas of resistance and then we have this one support to keep an eye on really to see this support broken and turn into resistance will give me more of confidence that the price action will start to head a little bit lower till that time though i still think that the market's going to want to see a new high i still think that that's in the the picture frame or potentially close this window that's up here that we were talking about people say you know it's a island reversal I don't, you know, it is what it is. I, you know, I call it an island in the sky. You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. But it basically what took place was it gapped up and then gapped down and left some, you know, clouds in the sky right there. So that is pretty much all I have for you today. There wasn't really anything too much on the news. Nothing really much going on. I don't have any positions holding over the weekend other than some gold positions. And I'm hoping that that breaks lower. And then I also have some uh, gold mining, silver mining positions that I also wish and hope that go lower because that's the only thing that i feel comfortable with um dollar cost averaging into at this particular point in time um that's all i really have for you today we have those three levels keep an eye on them ask me questions in the comments if you have any see ya